the Inter-University Center for Alternative Economics to organize uh, such a, uh, an important uh, topic as well as a lecture on such an important issue which is happening in the country, a public lecture on farmers question. Uh, indeed, uh, this is in, in collaboration with the Kuchi Collective, a friend circle who are actually organizing uh, different uh, issues on alternative discourse on development and other issues. And uh, we are very happy that uh, we are jointly organizing this. And the objective of our center is actually to work on inter such alternative approaches in economics and development. Uh, so uh, uh, we are very glad to have the session and indeed we got uh, a very uh, eminent personalities in earlier lectures also like uh, Dr. Viju today we got. So we are very fortunate to have him today. And this is indeed the 19th lecture in that row of different in the last year, last two years we are organizing such lectures. So uh, we are very happy. And uh, this is one of the first public lecture of that kind, which is having a very common, you know, moving from the academic uh, kind of thing. This is also touching upon the current issues in the uh, issue in Indian uh, scenario. So uh, we are very uh, grateful to have such uh, a, an eminent uh, fellow like uh, uh, Dr. Biju. So on behalf of Inter-University Center, as well as uh, the Kochi Collective, uh, I'm welcoming Dr. Biju Krishnan, uh, uh, all, the All India Joint Secretary of uh, All India Kisan Sabha. So welcome, uh, Dr. Biju. Thank you. And Biju had secured his PhD from uh, SIS uh, School of International Studies, JNU on agrarian questions, in fact, uh, co-supervised by Professor Utsa Patnaik. And uh, uh, we know uh, Prof. Uh, Dr. Viju for quite a long time. In fact, it is a very, is a nice person as well as a very, you know, uh, an interesting uh, human being who is in fact uh, very much committed to the social cause as well as his activism is, in fact, in that sense is, a, uh, you know, it's always, uh, and inspiring one for all of us as an young student and I was in uh, different campuses and all. So uh, he was a faculty earlier uh, before joining in the uh, All India Kisan Sabha as the Joint Secretary. He was uh, worked in at St. Joseph College and uh, other institution in Northeast. And, uh, and he was also uh, in fact uh, in the post uh, uh, Gujarat riot 2002, he was one of the members in the fact-finding committee, uh, which was uh, uh, in the name of Sehmat, the Safdar Hashmi Memorial Trust. And he visited, uh, along with other friends, he visited in uh, Gujarat and, in fact, had a lot of, uh, you know, uh, uh, the concealed information, which is, in fact, brought out by uh, these young uh, researchers of JNU and other institution and uh, in fact uh, that has uh, made uh, this issue more public and uh, after that he had a lot of uh, uh, you know activities like you know uh, not only as the AKS uh, uh, joint secretary and other uh, form he had been actively involved in different uh, activities and the recent one is uh, the uh, the this Kisan uh, Morsha, which was happened in 2019, that is uh, the Bhumi Adhigari Andolan. And in fact, in that also, he was had a very active role and uh, many more things. He used to write extensively in the agrarian issues, especially the ASEAN regions, the free trade agreements and other issues and all. So uh, as an academic, as well as as an activist, uh, uh, he's in fact uh, made his own uh, marks in the field. So. Uh, we are very happy that uh, Dr. Viju is today going to speak uh, a little bit, reflect on a little bit on the recent uh, farmers' uh, protest as well as the farm bill, in fact. This is not about a protest, in fact. The farm bills, uh, the three farm bills, in fact, had a lot of you know, implication, and that is why the main reason which uh, the farmers, uh, in fact, are uh, protesting. Now, uh, as a uh, formality of welcoming, uh, let me also welcome 
uh, the uh, members of coordinators of uh, Kochi Collective, uh, Dr. Aparna Ishwaran, uh, Dr. Matthew from MG University, uh, Hamida from Calicut University, Shirin from JNU, and uh, the, these are the people in fact actively coordinates as part of the uh, Kochi Collective. And I also wish to in fact welcome my friends, fellow friends, uh, Professor Anita, uh, the uh, professor and head of the Department of Economics, University of Kerala, Manju Dean and uh, Prasad uh, Shija, professor uh, from our department, uh, Christabel, director, uh, plan placement cell, and many more who are going to join from the uh, University of Kerala. And of course, other students, uh, faculty members, and uh, you know, staff of Inter University Center, Reshma is also there. So uh, then all the fellow participants and students uh, on behalf of all of us, we are welcoming all of you in one word. Uh, so thank you all for being here. And uh, then uh, let me, in fact, also uh, uh, briefly talk about the issues which we are going to discuss today. There are uh, mainly uh, in the, uh, as, part as a problem, uh, the, the concerns of the farmers uh, regarding the three farm bill is the following, like uh, at, at least five problems are very, very important one. For the, the first one in that sense is the, the, is the, the center state relation, which has been in fact, uh, you know, uh, touched upon or in fact questioned by this very farm bill and uh, for, for, sorry, farm act. Now, uh, again, it is also, uh, uh, made uh, an issue of uh, uh, treating uh, though it, it is a, uh, it is in fact talks in terms of market which is uh, the flexibility or the access of market but in fact this is not talking about uh, an equitable level playing market uh, rather than it speaks about a two different type of market which is in fact sets in uh, sets with the two different rules so at the same time the concerns again it is talks about in terms of fragmented market when you say about your market is you know uh, well and good uh, to make the uh, farmers to access having be better access and all all despite all that fact it is in fact a fragmented market structure and it is also uh, you know generate issues of uh, you know uh, the, uh, the, the the in fact the bias uh, prominence in the form of uh, the agribusiness and the big corporates are going to play a, a crucial role in that. So this is, these are the things which in fact made uh, the farmers really, you know, uh, come out uh, and, you know, protest against this farm bill. And it is nothing uh, trivial. This is very important. And uh, many times we feel that, you know, why people are, uh, uh, you know, uh, agitating against this kind of thing. So, uh, these are the concerns which really we need to address and that was never happened uh, in this particular case and in in the previous years and all when the government had the similar issue though but they were actually reluctant to have uh, this sort of uh, legislation which is going to happen very soon or so so they they, they are not accepting it so with that point and uh, then uh, there is no equal equal, equal playground between the farmers the sellers as well as the buyers in that context so these are the issues uh, in fact mainly uh, triggered by the farmers to basically come out and uh, and I'm not actually going to speak much on this fact and the issues of MSP and uh, the other thing which was the farmers trying to you know uh, highlight are very very important because when uh, all this has been actually uh, read together then the rights of the farmers as well as their minimum uh, uh, you know the, their life itself is maybe for at least for the marginal and the uh, small farmers are going to be in trouble therefore the uh, the the protest of the farmers in that sense is very legitimate as well as you know we need to basically see what is actually an actress as well as a person who is in fact uh, talks about as well as repeatedly represents uh, in the visual media as well as uh, like you who can in fact reflect a bit more as well as you know the current situation and how the government is in fact treats uh, such a, uh, an issue and uh, with this let me uh, uh, conclude my uh, introductory remark and uh, uh, and let me invite uh, Dr. Viju to reflect on this. Thank you. If I may briefly intervene, please put all the audio and video in mute mode, except Comrade Viju's.
and uh, uh, please type in any chat line as it comes your queries thank you thank you siddik uh, i find a lot of uh, uh, friends on the uh, in the google meet also my uh, professor ayan mukherjee also i could see i thank uh, kochi collective and the inter university center for alternative economics uh, university of kerala for giving me this opportunity to speak to all of you on the ongoing protests by farmers the issues involved and what has led to these protests of such an unprecedented nature uh, and uh, what has made it a historic protest uh, in last uh, many decades firstly i think uh, we need to go into a, a little back into 2014 elections when narendra modi and the bjp were facing the elections in 2014 there was already an agrarian crisis farm incomes were uh, low and farmer suicides were also quite high due to the uh, indebtedness the, uh, because of the policies that have been implemented by different governments over time uh mr modi and the bjp touched the pulse of the farmers at that time and made very attractive promises which raised hopes in the minds of farmers agriculture workers and workers in more than 300 public meetings where he attended himself and many more where his 3d projections were uh, displayed as well as in the bjp manifesto it was promised that farmers income should be doubled farmers would be given at least one and a half times more than the cost of production as the support price for their produce as recommended by swaminathan commission the inputs like seeds fertilizers etc would be provided at subsidized rates cheaply to farmers the crop loans would be given at low interest rates and if there is a crop loss due to natural calamities or other reasons then there would be crop insurance provided to the farmers sab har khet ko pani water for every field was another promise of the government and it was also mentioned that there would be no forcible acquisition of land no acquisition of land without the permission of the farmers and those dependent on land in addition to the agriculture workers it was promised that they would be provided at least 200 days of work and an increased uh, with increased wages so this naturally created a lot of enthusiasm in the uh, rural areas and that translated into votes for the bjp and if you look at the uh, election results especially in haryana and maharashtra where bjp has never come to power on its own um, they managed to come to power in these two states with good backing of the agrarian classes so that is uh, in 2014 and in 2014 once they come to power within a few days we met the agriculture minister with the uh, all india kisan sabha delegation and demanded that the promise of providing a minimum support price of at least 50% more than the cost of production should be implemented it was their electoral promise it was uh, the promise made by mr modi himself the agriculture minister just laughed off and asked us why were we so serious about it it's only an election time promise it is only uh, every political party makes promises to get votes and it is only should be seen as such very soon the bjp national president also made the statement that these are only chunavi jumlas or election time jingles and the narendra modi led bjp government filed an affidavit in the supreme court that this cannot be implemented so very soon into the first term of 
Narendra Modi led BJP government, we find that they are uh, showing signs that the promises made are going to be betrayed. Am I audible? audible? Yes, you are audible. It's a brief, it's a brief stuck. Yeah. Um, so the land acquisition ordinance was brought, which was against the BJP manifesto promise of having a land use plan and uh, no acquisition of land without the uh, prior informed consent of the farmers and the dependents on land. It was against this that the first protest started. And an issue-based unity was built by with uh, All India Kisan Sabha playing a, a major initiative that was called the Bhumi Adhikar Andolan or the Land Rights Movement, which uh, revolved around the two issues of land and forest rights as well as uh, against indiscriminate land acquisition, uh, acquisition or corporate land grab. Hundreds of organizations came together to form this issue-based unity and with repeated struggles, it was uh, the BJP government was forced to actually withhold these land acquisition ordinance. It could not be passed as uh, acts in the parliament, though they tried it thrice and uh, they had to withdraw from it. So this issue-based unity led to the first defeat probably for the Narendra Modi-led BJP government, and they had to withdraw the land acquisition ordinance. Then came the... Um, 2016, you had the um, note bandi or the demonetization decision being taken. That added to the distress of the agriculture workers, the peasantry, as well as the working class in a big way. Initially, actually, at that time, on an independent manner, the All India Kisan Sabha was amidst a Kisan Sangar's rally. And November 24th, we had the first. Uh, all India rally against the demonetization as well as the against the agrarian crisis and the betrayals of the government. But uh, in 2017, you found a lot of because the first two years, uh, usually the just after a government takes over, then uh, there is not much protests happen. They give some time to the government. But in uh, post the demonetization, we find. Every section is in distress. So there were many protests rising, working class out in protest, the different groups of farmers out in protest. We saw the uh, protests in Maharashtra, Rajasthan, Haryana, Punjab, Himachal. Literally every state had massive protests with the two demands of um, ensuring remunerative price for their produce and freedom from indebtedness. It is in the pro process of this struggle that you found in Mansour in Madhya Pradesh, the, when the farmers were demanding remunerative price for their it was fired up by the BJP government and six farmers, six farmers uh, were killed in the firing. What were their demands? They were asking for proper price for their produce. We visited their houses. They were not affiliated to All India Kisan Sabha or to any left uh, political party or anything. They were all hardcore sympathizers and supporters of the BJP and the Sangh Parivar. We, we could still find flags of BJP on their houses. They had produced garlic. The cost of production per kg of garlic, according to the farmers, were 33 to 35 rupees a kg. According to the BJP government in the state, the cost of production of one kg of garlic was 27 rupees. Even if you take 27 rupees as the cost of production, then in a hectare, the farmer spends around one and a half lakh as cost of cultivation, cost of production. And uh, we find that in the Nimach market at that time, the wholesale market, the price was one rupee a kg that the farmer was getting. 
on the same day reliance fresh was selling it at 147 rupees a kg so here the farmers were actually asking to ensure that at least they get little more than their cost of production as the price for the produce no intervention from the government entirely like the present promise of big traders coming and helping farmers with uh, better prices with that narendra modi is making a similar situation existed there that uh, the farmers were uh, being cheated or literally looted by the big traders it is for demanding the uh, right their rightful due that they were fired at and six farmers were shot dead post the mansoor incident another issue based unity was built called the all india kisan sangharsh coordination committee only around two issues that is uh, ensuring assured remunerative price for the produce and freedom from indebtedness more than 200 organizations of farmers came together they might have differences on other issues but on these two issues they came together in the course of struggles we could also arrive at consensus on wider issues for instance uh, uh, some of the organizations initially were hesitant to take up issues about the goraksha attacks and uh, so called goraksha attacks in which many were killed but uh, in the course of struggles by the end of 2018 most of the organizations also started taking a position against these attacks which were going on and in which more than 100 uh, especially farmers from muslim and dalit communities were killed that uh, consensus also emerged on wider set of issues we had numerous struggles you all have seen the kisan long march from nasik to mumbai in which uh, thousands marched more than 186 kilometers in 6 to 7 days and uh, forced the maharashtra bjp government to accept all the 12 demands that they had put forward this struggle so an unprecedented solidarity emerging with all sections coming out in support you had the middle class the workers the dabba walas the uh, uh, the dalit chawls nearby coming out in support and uh, also small traders coming out in support providing slippers and uh, food for the marchers uh, who had marched more than 186 kilometers so that is also something which we had never seen before a new kind of solidarity emerging it was visible also in the rajasthan struggles as especially in sikkar where all sections including auto drivers um, traders and uh, uh, working class middle class all of them coming in solidarity with the farmers naturally it was an outpouring of the general discontent that existed in the society because of the distress created by the um, note bandi the demonetization and the gst related uh, dishes so uh, in 2018 we had three important uh, protest actions first was the 9th august uh, on the anniversary of quit india movement a jail bharo in which workers and farmers agriculture workers and also for the first time the retired jawans came out in support of this in which more than 5 lakh people took part in this jail bharo movement um, with the slogan that kisan virodhi uh, bjp modi gaddi chodo the anti farmer bjp and narendra modi should quit from uh, the seat of power that is uh, um, with that slogan and uh, in Se- on september 5th we had a massive mazdoor kisan sangharsh rally in which more than 2 lakh farmers agriculture workers and workers joined in delhi and in my almost three decades of um, activism i have not seen that kind of a protest with- in which more than 2 lakh uh, uh, farmers agriculture workers and workers joined together in the uh, post the mansoor incident continuous struggles by the all india kisan sangharsh coordination committee and different parliament marches a kisan parliament in delhi in which from amidst the struggles for the first time probably in our history the two bills were prepared and these bills were presented in the parliament as private member bills one demanding 
assured remunerative price and procurement and another demanding these bills remain in the parliament now we see that three new bills have uh, come in 2020 july without any uh, mention about the earlier proposals which came from farmers themselves but the th these struggles also led to some electoral reverses for the bjp in some of the states like madhya pradesh chatisgarh rajasthan and so on and uh, generally there was an imprint in the minds of the peasantry bjp modi kisan virodhi we also find many other promises like the pradhan mantri fasal bima yojana the insurance policy in which huge premiums are collected from the state the farmers and from the central governments by big corporate insurance companies and we find every year these companies were making huge profits thousands of crores of profits even the cag has um, mentioned about this while the farmers are not getting uh, any compensation when their crop loss happens due to some uh, natural calamities or other reasons so this is also uh, and uh, it is interesting to note um, narendra modi's home state of gujarat and Mad uh, madhya pradesh both bjp ruled states are now uh, planning to go out of this pradhan mantri fasal bima yojana in such circumstances instead of doubling farmers incomes what we found is actually only the woes of farmers were doubled farmers suicides continued unabated in um, six year uh, in the last uh, six years every year according to the conservative figures more than 12000 farmers are committing suicide those who are in indebted in and in distress have been committing suicide farmers are not getting the remunerative price all of a sudden in uh, just before the 2019 elections a little before the 2019 elections the modi government announced that we are already giving 50% more than the cost of production i would like to bring to your notice some issues some figures regarding this what was promised was c2 plus 50 that is all the comprehensive costs incurred by the farmers plus 50% was promised if you look for wheat um, the msp announced this 1925 per quintal had it been c2 plus 50 as per the commission on agriculture costs and uh, prices uh, calculations then it should have been something like 2140 rupees had it been according to the state government projections of c2 plus 50 it should have been something like 2772 rupees per quintal such huge gaps are there in terms of calculation of these prices also there are lot of uh, uh, problems that exist which farmers have been pointing out time and again and we all know that procurement is also not effective everywhere so uh, uh, only in wheat and paddy at least to some extent uh, that uh, there is procurement in states like uh, haryana punjab parts of madhya pradesh west up and so on in many of the parts of uh, india even the minimum support price announced is only notional as there is no procurement it is only on paper as there is no procurement that happens um, so here uh, for one one more uh, instance which i would like to mention is if you take the case of bihar or jharkhand odisha etc while minimum support price for paddy is 1868 per quintal the farmers there since there is no uh, uh, especially bihar jharkhand etc where there is no uh, public procurement neither are there the regulated markets it is directly the traders who are buying from farmers there they are getting only um, anything between 800 to 1200 only because they are forced to make distress sales uh, in fact yesterday a, an old student uh, of jnu who is entirely into farming in nawada district of uh, bihar was telling me that uh, he managed to get 1300 rupees per quintal while the minimum support price is 1868 um, 
in most parts it is much lesser that they are getting in uh, if, uh, a state like kerala is providing 2750 per quintal and procuring paddy from the farmers so it in such a circumstance you had a betrayal of most of the promises the hope that was generated by mr modi in 2014 was belied in a big way there was promises of 2 crore employment for youth every year but we find in 45 years the highest unemployment rate uh, farmers suicides i already mentioned increase in malnutrition in a big way very uh, dangerous proportions in some states like maharashtra chatisgarh jharkhand madhya pradesh odisha and so on and uh, but in 2019 bjp and mr modi manages to win the election again in a much bigger way post the pulwama balakot incidents and ultra nationalist campaign that went into it uh, after that and also uh, the um, use of the corporate media in north in north india known more as the godi media and uh, huge expenses at the with the help from the corporate cronies in the elections and just before election the government announces a pradhan mantri kisan samman nidhi where 6000 rupees per hectare is promised to all farmers and the first installment of that comes into the farmers accounts even on the day of the polling so uh, the election commission's role and all that is there it is in such a circumstance that they again win and also the disarray in the um, opposition ranks that uh, they could that they could not put up a fight is also uh, a matter to be noted they come uh, uh, win the elections in a much bigger way but if you see 2019 till now there is an economic recession kind of situation big increase in um, uh, unemployment jobs lost in textile industry more than 30 lakh people losing job in uh, automobile industry more than 10 lakh people losing job and so on uh, so this is uh, been happening it is in such circumstance and also uh, profit making public sector undertakings being uh, privatized in a big way we uh, uh, in uh, during this period it is in such circumstance that the pandemic struck and even when the pandemic struck for almost 3 uh, months after the first uh, instance of um, corona uh, virus disease in wuhan though there were enough warnings from the food and agriculture organization the world health organization etc that it would, it could lead to a um, big uh, crisis increased unemployment and uh, also uh, poverty food crisis and so on almost 3 months went into just uh, uh, trying to create a communal polarization around the citizenship amendment act the article 370 and so on and we all know how the protests against these uh, policies these decisions were met with uh, repressed in a um, big way by the government it is only uh, uh, and in between when the whole world was talking about uh, a physical distancing to resist the Uh, covid 19 spread we had the namaste trump a mega event in ahmedabad where they claimed that um, few lakh people assembled to receive donald trump and an elected government in madhya pradesh was um, resorting to horse uh, 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 the uh, bjp was resorting to horse trading and other uh, attempts to um, overturn the elector, uh, electoral mandate it is only on 22nd march that the janta curfew was announced and uh, uh, with uh, the prime minister asking people to bang plates and uh, express uh, appreciation for the health workers and sanitation staff and on 24th the lockdown was announced without any consultation with state governments which are in the forefront of building resistance to the pandemic or with political parties and uh, um with uh, not much notice to the general public when the lockdown was announced the indian farmers were expecting a bumper harvest 
especially in the north where wheat is cultivated in a big way about compared to last year about 11% increase in acreage of wheat was there so they uh, uh, they were expecting a bumper harvest but if you look at the manner in which lockdown was imposed how uh, post the partition you had the biggest exodus of people where millions had to march from their places of work to the uh, their hometowns or to their villages left to fend for themselves so there was a harvesting crisis and a marketing crisis that happened in the first 23 days of lockdown if you compare with the last year only um, 6% of the wheat arrivals uh, last year only 6% of that had arrived in the markets in the first 23 days so there was huge losses for farmers um because even if uh, family labor was used for harvest they couldn't uh, transport it to the markets even if they managed to transport it to market uh, no buyers and this kind of a situation every crop suffered horticultural crops in a big way um, vegetables and uh, fruits and flowers perishable suffer uh, farmers cultivating these crops suffered in a big way grape farmers in maharashtra alone are said to have suffered th- um, over a thousand crore loss uh, the dairy farmers milk rates reduced in a big way about 10 to 15 rupees per liter and you also had poultry farmers who were uh, uh, getting about uh, 80 to 90 rupees per uh, live bird get, uh, being forced to sell at anything between 20 to 25 rupees only so every section suffered income losses farmers agriculture labor the working class and now the figures that are coming um, initially the figures were saying about 12 crore people lost their jobs and uh, professor arun kumar and others say it should be anything over 20 crore so that uh, required a more sensitive approach from the central government the central uh, we as organization of farmers along with the different organizations of agriculture labor and the working class had demanded at least an income support of 7500 rupees per month to all non tax pay- paying poor uh, people of our country food security not just rice or wheat but also a food kit like in kerala where all essentials that a family require in a month are given kerala has been doing it throughout the entire lockdown period that is not happening in other in other states uh, i think that people who are listening to me from kerala have to uh, understand that in uh, with income losses with no such support from the governments uh, in uh, either the central government or most state governments is the situation that the people have been in we also demanded loan waiver for farmers um, nrega at least 200 days of work at 600 rupees per day if no work then unemployment wage of at least 300 rupees but none of these was acceptable to the bjp government whereas while they refused to waive the loans of farmers about 68000 crores of loans of willful defaulters like mehul choksi uh, malya nirav modi's and also people like ramdev and others have been done during the lockdown period there was no demand for the kind of acts that were uh, uh, pushed through the parliament from the grassroots the grassroots demands i already mentioned the two bills were placed in the parliament all of a sudden without any relief for the large section of peasantry and the agriculture labor or working class the government comes up with three ordinances in the first week of june and makes the atrocious claim that when india gained uh, one independence uh, of freedom in 1947 indian farmers did not get freedom and it is mr narendra modi who in june 2020 has given freedom to farmers to sell anywhere they want 
So one of the act which is brought uh, here in simple terms in Hindi, we use that Mandi Todo Corporate Loot Badao Kanun. That is, uh, you have very long, uh, attractive names. This government has a pension to for uh, naming very uh, attractively um, different projects. You have the uh, even the most uh, adverse, uh, most anti-farmer bills would have a very attractive name. The farmers produce trade and commerce promotion and facilitation act. That is the uh, so this essentially is to try and do away with the regulated markets which have been uh, in most states from 1960s uh, the agriculture produce marketing committees and the apmc act repeatedly different governments i am not saying it's just the bjp government earlier congress governments also have tried to dilute the uh, apmc uh, act and tried to pressurize the states to uh, either do away with the all the restrictions uh, in the APMCs. Now, uh, like Siddiq mentioned before, going entirely against the federal rights of states, agriculture being a state subject, without any consultation with the state governments, this, these acts are being brought. APMCs had come into being initially to uh, ensure at least some level playing field. Otherwise, the uh, big traders were uh, literally uh, exploiting the peasantry and not giving proper price for their produce. So with regulated markets, with some government control, some dispute mechanism, and so on, there was uh, at least a semblance of lev uh, level playing field that was sought to be created. That is being, and we are not saying there, uh, there were no problems, but the government is resorting to throwing the baby with the bathwater. What was re required was to strengthen uh, and uh, the different mechanism which would protect the farmers' interests and uh, ensure that they are not uh, they they are not cheated. But instead, now the uh, government is claiming that the farmers' uh, produce would be bought directly by the big companies and farmers would get good price. That is Adani's, Ambani's, Birla's, Tata's, ITC, Walmart and Pepsi will give our farmers better price than what they are getting now. That is the claim. I did mention about uh, earlier about the case of the garlic farmers in Madhya Pradesh. I also gave you the example of Bihar where in 2006, the APMCs were done away with. The farmers in Bihar are uh, have not seen big corporates coming and giving them better prices. They have only further exploited the uh, the farmers. That is the situation. Now the second act, it is something which this protest is not just of farmers. It is a uh, protest where each one of you have to be part of it. The Essential Commodities Act, brought in 1950s, was to ensure that. There is no hoarding and black marketing. What is happening with the Essential Commodities Act Amendment Amendment Act? The rice, wheat, different pulses, oil seeds, potato, onion, all these essentials are no longer, uh, literally it renders them as no longer essential commodities. So you can hoard how much ever you want. There is no control. Whatever is the installed capacity of these big agribusinesses, that can be retained even in times of famine, in times of food insecurity, in times of war. That is the kind of an act which has been brought in. They say, the government says that um, if there is a price rise, they can intervene. Yes, there is a clause included which says uh, quite vaguely without uh, clarifying uh, how much uh, from when the price rise would be looked into and all. It says that if there is a 100% rise in price of horticultural goods and 50% uh, rise in crop, uh, the non-perishable good, 
uh, price, then the government can intervene. So this is also to promote, in a big way, hoarding and black marketing. It is going to lead to huge rise in prices for um, essential commodities for you and me and every uh, toiling Indian. So that is what is going to happen with this. Uh, you also should note some things. For instance, um, in 2014, after the BJP government had come to power, you had a situation where Arhar Da, in, um, also in some places known as Tuar, Tuar Da, the market uh, consumers had to pay up to 220 rupees a kg. The farmers at that time in Gulbarga, uh, northern Karnataka, where uh, which is one of the centers of Arhar or Tuar cultivation, were getting anything between 35 to 40 rupees a kg. But consumers were paying 180 rupees uh, more, if, even if you take 40 rupees a kg, 180 rupees more uh, in the market to uh, get a kilo of Arhar Dal. So here, usual argument is if there is a higher price given to the farmers, then it leads to price rise. But you see the margin of profit that some of these companies are making. That, uh, that is the case with many other produce. I can um, bring an n number of examples to uh, prove my case in that. The third act is the, again, you have a very attractive name. If you read the name, uh, one would feel, why are the farmers opposed to it? It says the farmers empower uh, farmers empowerment and protection agreement of price assurance and farm services act. So it talks about farmers empowerment, farmers protection, an agreement of price assurance. That price assurance is also there, and also um, it provides farm services. But uh, to put in simple terms, this is only corporate contract farming act one must note one thing in the last almost 10 years different governments have been trying to push state governments to pass model contract farming acts model uh, uh, tenancy act and as well as model apmc act none of these there has been resistance at the state level earlier and uh, now, through these acts, the government is, central government is trying to centralize all powers in its hands against the federal rights of the states, and at the same time, removing all controls over the con uh, big corporate companies. That is what is planned through these three acts. Are these three acts something which emerged suddenly in the... Um, midnight in uh, in the minds of narendra modi these are some things which have been continuously pressurized uh, india has been pressurized in the wto uh, professor indranath mukherjee is if he is listening he will uh, um, stand by me that continuously the countries like united states european union have been pressurizing india to um, cut food subsidies, agriculture subsidies, and also to withdraw from public procurement. Now, these three acts are, uh, though these uh, points were also uh, uh, articulated by the Shanta Kumar Commission, former BJP leader um, who uh, headed a commission uh, which came with recommendations that FCI should be privatized, this uh, procure, uh, uh, storage facilities, procurement, all that sh should be privatized. It also, for states like Kerala, importantly, it also said any state giving bonus over and above the minimum support price, from there, the uh, center should not procure. So these kind of recommendations. Now, um, it is this set of policy uh, acts which have come are actually who, uh, taking forward the neoliberal agenda in a much more aggressive way. The contra Corporate Contract Farming Act, we have innumerable examples from India and abroad. 
where the small farmers have literally been at the mercy of the corporate companies. For my PhD, I looked into the contract farming in Kuppam, uh, Chittur district in Andhra Pradesh, where the then Chief Minister, uh, the um, Chand uh, Chandra Babu Naidu, had um, brought in a contract farming uh, a Israeli American company called BHC Agro, hu paying huge subsidies for the fertigation and drip irrigation system. To the uh, 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 literally, the farmers initially got hundred percent subsidy, trying to induce them into the contract farming system. And what was grown? They were growing millets or paddy in those areas. The, they, they were asked to grow gherkins. If I take a poll here, how many know what gherkins are? I, 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 I am sure not more than 10 or 15 percent would know what gherkins are. They are not consumed by the poor in India. They are not consumed by the middle class in India, maybe in the super rich and or an entirely export oriented crop that is cultivated there. Initially, it did get better prices for farmers. Gradually, they ended up losing their lands. So that is what happened there. Here also, a similar situation is going to emerge. I would like to bring to your notice an interesting document called the Karnataka Integrated uh, Agri-Business Development Plan. They don't have an integrated agriculture development plan, but the BJP government of Edurapa, the earlier uh, uh, government not the present one brought this policy which says lands of farmers could be taken over up to 2000 acres and what would happen there would be um, agri tourism on those lands what would you have there would be uh, agri tourism where people from abroad or cities could come and stay there in comfortable luxurious cottages there would be few farmers who would cultivate land, there would be agriculture workers and farmers cultivating land. And there was an added attraction, there could be bullock cart riding and feeding of cows and goats. This, this is written in the Integrated Agri Business Development Plan of Karnataka. So it is, this is the vision that this government seems to be having for the farmers and agriculture labor of our country. So um, the farmers have recognized it. The, the prime minister is now claiming that in Hind uh, often in Hindi that kisanon ko gumra kiya gaya. The farmers have been misled. Actually, um, the farmers have understood that these acts are at the behest of the Adanis and Ambanis of our country. If you look into it, the acts have been passed only in uh, the ordinances came in june 2020 but it looks like adani knew uh, that uh, adani could preempt this because from 2014 to 2020 in many places huge silos are being con uh, constructed and they are having understanding with the food corporation of india that is something which has been happening Farmers have recognized this. That is why this kind of a resistance has been. We uh, gave a call for the Delhi Chalo on November 26th and 27th. Before that itself, these ordinances were burnt in thousands of places in um, across the country with workers and farmers coming together. The All India Kisan Sangar's Coordination Committee had many protests. Mind you, all these are during the COVID pandemic, during a very restrictive lockdown in many states, and the fear of the disease talking uh, that these protests have happened. People realize that their livelihoods, the future generations are threatened by it. That is why uh, the clear realization has also led to this call for boycott Adani's and Ambani products. That is not a call given by uh, any leadership of any of these organizations. That has come from the 
uh, farmers from below itself. Now it is forcing Adanis and Ambanis to come out with clarifications how they are not into contract farming, they are not against farmers' interests, and so on. But uh, we know the farmers know that these are only crocodile tears. And when we marched to Delhi on 26, the working class also had a countrywide strike. More than 26 crore workers are said to have participated in that. On the same day, in other parts of India, we had a Gramin Bharat Hartal also on the same day, where farmers organizations, work, uh, agriculture workers organizations came together and gave such a call. And we all saw how when the peaceful procession to towards Delhi in tractors, how the government uh, reacted to it, as though at the borders between two warring nations, huge trenches were dug, national highways were dug up, not by some anti-social elements, by the central government, by the BJP-led government, using big uh, uh, JCB uh, and other equipments. Water cannon was used, tear gas and uh, chili grenades were used on the farmers. Overcoming all that, thousands and thousands of farmers have been camping at different borders of Delhi. Protests are going on in other parts of the country also. The Singhu border, Tikri border, Ghazipur, Palwal, and Shahjanpur border between Rajasthan and Haryana on the Delhi Jaipur highway, all are witnessing thousands and thousands of people there. In the last more than a month, more than 50 farmers have become martyrs in this struggle. This government has still continued to remain insensitive, almost like Emperor Nero fiddling when Rome was burning. You have the prime minister um, different time. His own positions are also similar to that. Seven rounds of talks have gone on. They are still sticking to the same set of demands. Tomorrow, we are planning for a tractor rally um, through the Kundli uh, Manesar Palwal outer ring road of Delhi. We have planned our actions for the entire this January, if required, to go ahead. If the government is not willing to withdraw these three acts, as well as the amendments to the Electricity Act, which would reduce subsidies, lead to huge increase in irrigation costs for farmers and electricity costs for common people. The struggle is going to go on. The farmers have said, we will not withdraw from here until and unless these acts are repealed. We have planned now from 7th onwards till 20th, a series of campaign activities across the country, um, distribution of leaflets, um, public meetings, and so on. On 18th, we are having uh, observing a Mahila Kisan Day across the country. Um, and from 23rd, that is uh, Netaji uh, Subhashchandra Bose Day, till 26th, we will have massive sit-in, day and night sit-in, in front of the Raj Bhavans, the governor's um, offices across the country. And on 26th, after the official function of the um, government, Republic Day function, after that, without any disruption in the official function, must a worker peasant parade across the country, Mazdur Kisan parade will also be held. These set of plan already we have done. I would like to bring to your notice, as I'm talking to you, the last six days we have had heavy rain in Delhi. The temperatures have gone down on some days almost to one degree. People are out on the streets. And the government is prolong prolonging this without trying to arrive at a uh, resolution of the problems. So uh, we require 
much more active solidarity from all of you people who can uh, uh, write about the policies why why the farmers are out on protests how to uh, also expose the anti farmer nature of the government and those who are uh, in a position to come actually be part of the protests wherever they are happening it is a historic protest that is going on a very um, steely resolve among the farmers of our country they have come prepared with their uh, all provisions and uh, um, with the entire families in many cases and they are camping at different borders of delhi we are sure that this united struggle in fact it has to be noted two, two days back uh, some uh, journalist was asking me who is the leader of this struggle i said that it is a collective moment there is no one single leader of the struggle if you uh, say who is the actual leader it is our farmers and the workers who are the leaders of this movement the same lockdown period as people were kept under lockdown the gates were unlocked for corporate loot we saw how workers rights are being trampled upon how the hard won right of 8 hours of work 8 hours of leisure and no cut in pay now is being increased to 12 hours of work and all labor rights are being withdrawn so there is a need for a united struggle a need for uniting around uh, an alternative a pro people alternative that will talk about universal health universal education universal public distribution system social security and uh, democratic rights of all people would be respected i think that is the direction in which we have to go and uh, this struggle is a milestone uh, as far as democratic movement present movement in our country is concerned thank you all for giving me this opportunity to uh, speak on these issues uh, i am sure with the support of all of you this united movement will emerge victorious and the government will have to bow down to the desires of the peasantry thank you thank you dr vichu for such a wonderful uh, presentation and now uh, i would like to invite aparna uh, to uh, handle the question as well as you know uh, your comments regarding this i think we can take a few questions right dr uh, comrade vichu Okay. Thank you, Siddiq. There are a couple of questions in the chat box. I'll read it to um, Comrade Vijay, and he can respond either one by one or take it collectively as he pleases. Uh, the first question here is by Kashish Kaka. He says, um, "Good evening, sir. Sir, will the farm bills help bring private investments into agriculture? Could you please throw some light on this?" um sh should i read out all the questions or would you like to take one by one you read out all okay and uh the next question is by kashish bharatwaj who says good evening sir will the government still have a role in controlling the commodity prices vijay okay. shri aram has a question where she asks do you think farm sector privatization will result eventually in the long run as the government reports persist on this no once again once again that question okay i repeat uh, do you think farm sector privatization will result eventually in the long run as the government reports persist on this um that's what she's written um Okay. Okay. One... I think, I think I get that. Okay. Okay. And there's one more question by Sharon Jose, who has asked, "Sir, how will these farm bills affect a consumer state like Kerala?" Those are the questions which are which are currently here. I'll update you if yeah uh, yeah comes. Uh, the 
this question that kashish has asked will farm bills help bring private investment uh, yes uh, in a in a way if you allow total freedom for the corporate companies to hold and uh, also decide the prices of produce with no control from the government it is likely it is a uh, avenue for profiteering at the expense of people for the uh, big corporate agri businesses so it it is likely to bring in investment but whether any kind of investment is uh, to be seen as pro people whether it is going to help the people whether it is going to help the farmers that is the test of these policies i think there very clearly these policies are against the interests of the farmers that is uh, to be noted already if you look at whether private investment is coming if adani agri logistics is investing surely if they are setting up something they they must be investing something but such investments are uh, in any way going to help the farmers that is to be noted what is required we we have been asking for an increased uh, increase in the network of market agricultural markets um great, uh, quicker and easier access to them for farmers so that they are not at far off distances that is required and uh, the cent the governments not just central government the state governments should also invest in this other than that we also feel uh, uh, cooperatives and self help groups and such uh, bodies also should be uh, involved in procurement in storage and um, processing value addition marketing and such activities this is a uh, the government's efforts are totally in the opposite direction we are not having a position that there should be no private involvement at all but this is a total clean uh, to, uh, a blank check to the Uh, corporate agri businesses will government still have a role in controlling commodity prices uh, on paper yes some role would be there but in effect there wouldn't be uh, they wouldn't be doing much that is the earlier case of uh, pulses which i mentioned if the government wanted they could have brought some cont- price control but that was not happening because the beneficiary is are who are the beneficiaries biggest sellers of pulses adanis ambanis tatas birlas itc all of them are into selling pulses and such produce so uh, uh, their role in controlling prices especially with this essential commodities act the, the amendments being brought also it is uh, going to be almost very nominal do you think farm sector privatization as government is sticking to the i think uh, uh, the government wants to bring in uh, corporates in a big way into agriculture that is the uh, uh, direction in which they are going to uh, going ahead that is why these bills have also come so uh, uh, whether there will be in a big way privatization that, uh, or private investment that will come for the first question all, uh, also was addressing the same aspects as far as the farmers are concerned we have uh, given an open challenge to the government we have called for repealing of these acts but let them try implementing it without the uh, consent of the farmers we will resist it on the ground there will be a peaceful resistance built against um, such systems which are act- which will uh, lead to a situation where the farmers are going to be exploited that is uh, uh, this movement has very clearly shown that how uh, we have had very interesting uh, modes of protest toll free movement across different national and state highways in many places the toll gates have also emerged as a major um, 
earning of incomes uh, huge incomes by uh, uh, many of the corporate companies against that there has been this movement boycott of adani ambani products in a big way that is happening many people giving up jio uh, connection and so on um, in a big way so uh, the movement has thrown up some innovative modes of protest we are uh, confident that these uh, efforts of the government can be uh, uh, resisted effectively the fourth question can you repeat once again or uh, can it is by sharon jos yeah. she has asked you how will these farm bills affect a consumer state like kerala yeah uh, how will it affect kerala kerala you see even paddy uh, we are a, a deficit in uh, rice so we buy from other states and uh, with this kind of a uh, these three bills let, let us take the contract farming act itself the uh, it would lead to shifting in cropping patterns usually we have seen earlier there was a another um, effort to bring in this uh, contract farming earlier in the name of public private partnership for integrated agricultural development there also that up to uh, 2000 acres or more can be pooled together by farmers and corporate companies would decide what to grow on that this was a, a, a tried by the earlier upa government congress led upa government the second upa government and there all the uh, the requisitions by different corporate companies were mostly for non food crops uh, the so called commercial crops or exported uh, export oriented crops so this is going to hit the food security in our country that is one thing and these uh, the essential commodity act amendments the huge storages that are there the installed capacity i mentioned earlier that even when there is a shortage here the installed capacity cannot be tampered with adanis have enough agro uh, processing uh, industry in say, uh, countries like bangladesh and other places they can even in such circumstance shift these crops to these uh, countries so this is going to lead to increase costs consumer is uh, uh, that is consumer has to pay higher prices and states like kerala which are dependent on other states for their food grain needs and uh, much of their agricultural needs are also going to be affected in a big way couple more questions have come up i should read it out um ranjit kumar kc has asked till now government has shown no signs of yielding to the demands of the farmers how long do you think the farmers will be able to go on with the strike uh, the, another question by parvati naya she writes apmc mandis are also existing simultaneously with the current reform does it increase the choice of the farmers then how the law become adversely affect farmers how how okay how, okay, yeah. okay i got it i got it uh, krishna kumar is uh, right krishna kumar is my old friend from jnu i think oh, yeah nice. <laughs> he yeah. has um, asked an ecological angle has been added in the current scene certain policy circles including issues like groundwater overuse what counter challenge does it does the farmers movement look to put forward towards upholding sustainable practices um abilash kb says um sir first of all a big salute to one and all who are part of this historical protest even facing various adversities including bad weather i think this protest is still con- still cornered only as an issue of farmers to the mass common people still they are not aware of what the threat of withdrawal of essential commodities list and its impact on the consumer states due to hoarding etc kindly comment on this fact and the role political parties and ngos can play in creating a mass protest um and the last question which i think would be the 
final question we'll be taking tonight is by Edwin Joy, uh, who writes in Comrade, in future, how these policies are going to affect public distribution system? Yeah, uh, one question which was asked about how long this struggle and no signs of yielding. Uh, we are prepared for the long haul. I think that message is, should be very clear to the government. The farmers have come prepared. They have braved the biting cold. And I, like I mentioned, last six days, heavy rains. They are still on the streets. No, Not a single farmer has uh, decided to go back. So this struggle is going to go on until the government withdraws these, repeals these acts. It may be a, a long drawn struggle. That realization is there among the farmers. That is where uh, also the support and solidarity of other sections of society is very important to ensure that a quicker resolution of this issue is there. And uh, such actions some actions are being planned. The last question also I will, uh, about the role about why it is only farmers, uh, only uh, portrayed as farmers issue and not others are not coming out in big way. Actually it is, uh, I mentioned earlier also that workers have come out in big way in support of the farmers, literally being part of the, it's not just issuing some statements or solidarity meetings and so on they are part of many of these protests that are happening and uh, other than that what role could the political parties play i think political parties here this is a protest which the different organizations of farmers have built up political parties in their own ways in different assemblies different uh, 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 also in parliament when it comes they have been playing some role when the bills were being passed also uh, around eight MPs were suspended for protesting against the uh, undemocratic manner in which so they have been playing a part uh, in uh, raising objection to the manner in it, which it was passed uh, also creating awareness about what is the problem with these acts in some of the states they have also come with alt uh, resolutions against the three farm acts asserting the federal rights of states different states have come up with that some states have come with acts uh, uh, which would ensure that these acts would not be um, implementable in those states that has happened even the state of kerala is uh, contemplating bringing with uh, bringing an alternative um, set of uh, le uh, alternative legislation which would showcase the alternative agriculture policy also that is uh, uh, in the pipeline about apmc mondays whether it will not increase the choice apmc mondays will be there that is uh, that is the argument the bjp government has been uh, talking the, again and again why farmers are so worried mondays will remain but one uh, as of now in the mondays there is the traders who are coming in need to pay a tax, a Monday tax. There is uh, some kind of restrictions which are there. The uh, uh, government role is there, regulation is there. But when they are, there is an option of going direct to the farmers without paying any tax, the Monday tax. One is the state is being denied a lot of revenue also in that way from the uh, big corporate companies by doing away with the uh, uh, having to pay tax and the other thing is uh, um, they uh, why will they come to the uh, apmc mondays when where they have to pay a tax when they can go directly and buy from the farmer so that is the situation where there would be yes apmcs would on paper would remain or those establishments would remain but in a gradual manner the total uh, buying of agricultural produce would shift to these 
big corporate companies. It is uh, also uh, uh, the government is going to slowly withdraw from public procurement. That is also uh, something, though it is not stated in any of this. They are, uh, the Prime Minister has been telling the MSP will also be, it, it would be given in writing that MSP will continue. But this MSP, what we are saying is it is not uh, available to farmers in most crops. It is not uh, in most states also, there is no procurement at MSP. That is about ecological issues. There have been questions. Farmers are as much concerned about environment and sustainable uh, agriculture. There is no uh, two opinions on that. Yes, there is excess use of groundwater, excessive use of chemical fertilizers and such things also lead to some issues. Those are no way linked to these things. Those have to be addressed on a different, at a different uh, level altogether. There, I think proper extension services, which, have, which also have been dismantled over the last 30 years in a big way, better agronomic practices, uh, which would lead to conservation of water and soil quality, uh, that has to be disseminated in a big way to the farmers. In, a, in our own way, we have, uh, as organizations of farmers, we have also been intervening um, uh, with our huge uh, membership base that we have in uh, taking forward some such policies. Hello, Comrade Biju, I have a question. Uh, yes, one minute. Uh, uh, may I request you to type it out, please? Also, we are running out of time. Okay, a small, uh, a small, uh, uh, Comrade Biju, please. Uh, you are muted. You <laughs> Hello. Can, uh, Hello. 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 Yeah. Okay. Uh, uh, Comrade Biju, please uh, explain what is your ex expectation about the outcome of this uh, strike? Uh, we are all optimistic, but uh, we, we want yeah. to hear from you. Uh, we, in our uh, university days, we have a slogan: "The people united shall always be victorious." <laughs> we are confident we will win, and. Uh, the uh, support has been growing. This question that was asked about the role of others in this uh, moment. Yes. Today uh, evening, I had a, uh, attended a meeting of a solidarity group called Nation for Farmers. In every state, they are uh, also uh, having chapters which are uh, in, uh, trying to build support for this movement. More farmers are coming to Delhi. In the coming, uh, within a week's time, you are having farmers coming from Kerala to Delhi, about 500 farmers in the first batch, about uh, 300 farmers from Bengal are coming, uh, from Gujarat, with braving a lot of repression in Gujarat. They had to, many of them had to disguise and come up to the borders of Rajasthan, from Rajasthan, from Udaipur, they had to come in. Uh, they have come and joined the protest. From uh, Odisha today, a group of about five uh, people have come, more are, uh, com are coming. And they have all come with the uh, preparation to sit here as long as required. So let us see. Let Mr. Modi and his team uh, try all they have in their armor. We will also uh, face it as it comes. Comrade Viju, there is one more question, and to be fair yeah. to her, um, yeah. Chantini P. C. Senen has asked, as agriculture being a state list of the seventh schedule of the constitution, can union government make such an act without the consultation of the state? Even if such a law were brought, can't judiciary do anything? Actually, ideally, the judiciary should have just struck down these acts, because you have rightly uh, mentioned that it is under the state a list that agriculture comes here um, violating the federal rights of states they are totally concentrating powers of the central government to change the entire uh, marketing system in our country to open up the lands of farmers for corporate contract farming and also for uh, 
hoarding and black marketing, whatever unlimited quantities, because these uh, companies, the silos that they are building are so huge and uh, it can store a lot of uh, grains in these uh, silos. So uh, it is very clearly against the interests of the state governments. Different state governments, different chief ministers are also uh, trying to bring a concerted opposition to this. As far as the judiciary's role, I think the less said the better. There's a uh, poem by Mykowski, um, an ode to the judges. So you should, if some of you can uh, find it, uh, you should read it. What the judges have done to our land, the kind of um, the manner in which the different protesters have been dealt with. You see the manner in which. Uh, Arnab Goswamis are given relief, whereas someone uh, like uh, uh, who has been part of democratic protests, who have been involved with social service for many years, how they are dealt with. We had to, uh, for a glass with a sipper for a, uh, a senior citizen of our country, a, a big campaign had to be done. That is when you have a judiciary here. It is, uh, I think, in such a circumstance, because some of us, we were initially whether we should go to court, go to the Supreme Court. But uh, the Supreme Court has lost a lot of uh, confidence of the people, I think, over the last few years. That is why, uh, uh, even before, on the issue of the minimum support price, on the issue of uh, NREGA and so on. We have uh, different organizations have gone to court, but the court has not intervened in favor of the farmers. So that is our experience. I hope uh, they uh, prove me wrong. Comrade Viju, I have a po important point because MSP and the importance of procurement as a legal right is one of the argument of the farmers and how that is very important in this context need to be reflected because the audience may not be very much aware of all that so it, this is also a very crucial point as far as so if yeah you i will i i will just uh, uh, msp it is not msp as the central government is now announcing i will just give you uh, i have been attending the meetings of the commission on agriculture costs and prices from 2009 onwards, this determines uh, this uh, actually advises the central government on the MSP of different crops. MSP of around 24 crops, if you take Jowar uh, hybrid and the other variety and paddy A grade and paddy common, like that, uh, almost 24 crops, the MSP is announced. And uh, only copra is the only commercial uh, crop of Kerala that features in that. But let us take the example of wheat, for instance. How do they calculate the costs? There are different costs, A2 plus FL. That is all paid out costs and family labor. And there is the C2 costs. C2 costs, all comprehensive costs, including the issue of uh, uh, rent and uh, um, such uh, uh, other uh, investments that go into everything is calculated so if you um, take the c2 cost of wheat according to cacp it is 1425 per quintal this is the cacp calculation if you take the a2 plus FL cost, it is 923 only. So almost 500 rupees less than the C2 cost of the CACP. If you take the state government projection, it is 1848 per quintal is the C2 cost. That is exactly 50 per, uh, that is um, 923 is the A2 plus FL. Uh, you add another 925 then it that is the c2 cost if you take the state 
government projections but the state government projections are just it is uh, you uh, only state governments can come, come and say this is our cost of production the cscp just rejects it then it takes the a2 plus fl which already is much below the c2 cost the weighted average is taken so let us say the cost of cultivation in kerala is 2000 rupees per quintal and the cost of cultivation in say uttarakhand is 1000 rupees a quintal the weighted average is taken as 1500 so uh, what you uh, the kerala farmer always already loses 500 rupees uh, lower is treated as the cost of production there and a small increase is made over and above that and that is announced as a2 plus fl plus 50 percent is being given but what we have been demanding is computing correctly the costs and c2 plus 50 that is what we have been demanding but uh, if you see the minimum support price that is being announced for different crops except for paddy and wheat and with some exceptions uh, for for instance some pulses some of the oil seeds which are procured in some states most other crops there is almost zero procurement so what we are saying is there should be assured procurement the bill that we had placed in parliament from amidst the struggles had um, insisted on assured procurement and remunerative cost according to c2 plus 50 percent the government is not willing to do that that was a uh, promise of modi it is uh, based on uh, swaminathan commission recommendation narendra modi's 2014 election promise bjp's 2000 14 election promise is what we are demanding and that as a legal right that is not there in any of these acts so uh, when you say one of our farmer leaders from tamil nadu used to say in tamil the children are asking the un uncle for sugar and sweets the uncle just writes on a piece of paper chakare or sugar or sweet and gives it to the um, children it it is it is meaningless for the children chini chakkare chittappa ethile ezhdi nakkappa that uh, the uh, msp for most of the crops is something uh, like that it is only on paper and uh, uh, very notional for a large section of farmers so that has to be uh, it has to be ensured that the costs are calculated properly and uh, uh, the inflation in uh, that is the increase in costs of inputs labor charges all that has to be taken into account and accordingly a price has to be fixed and farmers should get that so that is a uh, demand which we have uh, put forward only if that is that only if that can be ensured this cycle of indebtedness that is going on for many years um, will end and farm suicides could be reduced in a ma major way i hope i have addressed thank you so much. Yeah, yeah yeah thank you so much please Aparna. um oh. may I quickly um thank you formally uh, thank you dr viju krishnan for that brilliant presentation and for bringing with so much clarity using statistics, using evidence, examples, even slogans used by farmers to make us understand what are the real issues that farmers are battling with, especially since there is so much noise around the issue, literal uh, banging of the plates, but uh, not real engagement. In December, when Cochin Collective uh, was in talks in, in collaboration with Dr. Siddiq of Inter-University Center for Alternative Economics, we were thinking of how we as a research community can um, stand up for our responsibility towards um, fellow citizens. And we wanted somebody who would amplify the voices of the farmers as well as stand with them in solidarity. 
And I'm so pleased to say that uh, today's talk is a testimony to how right we were in the decision to approach you for a talk. And we are extremely grateful that you accepted our request. Thank you for systematically dismantling the so-called idea put forward by the corporate media that this is this is the protests that are happening is a one-off, isolated um outburst uh, which are limited to a certain sections thank you for um showing how um there are multiple solidarities that have come up how what all uh how the history of betrayals um, in, in the BJP government, under the BJP government, and how there is a history also of resistance by farmers, which forms a prelude to um, the ongoing protests. Um, and we as researchers are um, keenly looking forward uh, to the new modalities of uh, protests that are emerging, especially um, looking at how the government is so stumped by the fact that this is a group of um, protest who are so steely in their soul, um, who, are, who is receiving so much love and who is being well fed by the love of um, the comrades and uh, the langar, uh, the community offering langar. Um, more power to you, more power to the protesters. And I would like to quickly thank all the participants and the staff and students of IUCA because you were exactly what we were hoping for in today's talk. Uh, Comrade Viju's earlier talks were known for disruptions. Uh, so I would like to thank uh, Dr. Matthew Vergas for taking up with Gusto the gatekeeping administrative duties for the day. Let me conclude uh, by thanking doc Dr. Viju Krishnan once again, and with the hope that uh, the more than 12,000 farmers who were pushed to suicide, the 57 farmers who protesters have died recently, none of this will go in vain and that the government will finally see some sense, come back to their, their senses and honor the demands of uh, the protesters and um, stand with uh, honor the demands of those who literally feed the nation. Thank you once again and good night, everyone. And thank you, thank Dr. Siddiq. And thank you, comrade. Thank you. Thank so you. Uh, yeah. So thank you, uh, comrade Vichu. Thank you, and on behalf of IUCA and all of us, thank you very much. Okay. See you, comrade. See you.